The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got some weekly jobless claims out this morning. You got NVIDIA skyrocketing higher on some pretty dramatic earnings. You get the NASDAQ 100 up by a full percent right now. You get the S&Ps up by about half a percent. Dow and Russell slightly into the red. Let's kick it off with NVIDIA, man, because, boy, it was quite a number they put out after the bell last night. That number coming out at about 420, 420. Uh, 471 was what we came into the close at last night. You traded up almost $50. Now, it's so interesting here, right? You jump over to the Analyze tab. About a $40 move priced into the earnings after the bell last night. And what did we get? We're at about a $40 move to the upside. And boy, to the upside they go when you look at some of the numbers, man. Just for a moment, let's look a little big picture on NVIDIA. You drive higher to November of 2021, the market trades lower, and then from 108 to 500 plus bucks, man, you talk about it. The CEO, I think he's pushing almost $50 billion of wealth. Boy, it is quite a number, but let's get into the NVIDIA numbers because they are quite a number as well. Third straight sales forecast that beat estimates, okay? They beat on earnings, they beat on revenue, they beat on the forecast. Uh, yes, the forecast, so check it out. They're looking for $16 billion of revenue in the quarter they're in right now, which ends in October. That's their third quarter. The market was looking for 12.5. It is a blowout again, and they had a blowout earnings in May, and they do it again. They also announced a $25 billion stock buyback. They got margins in the tune of about 72%. So imagine you're doing a business where you're taking in $16 billion every three months. You're taking in 72% margins on that number. And check out the data center, right? This is fiscal year. Boy, it's been quite an acceleration. Uh, 2020, this is the data center, okay? In less than a decade, it's gone from a rounding error to the main source of sales in the data ad center. In the black, you're talking about the fiscal year we're in right now. In the blue is the estimate going forward. And yes, it is uh, quite the acceleration to say the least. So they took in $13.5 in the quarter they're in right now. That's doubling where they were a year ago. Analysts were looking for $11 billion. Now remember, they revised up to 11 only 90 days ago when they came in at 13.5. I mean, I know you want to give yourself room to deliver, right? What do they say? Under promise, over deliver. Remember that one, folks. Under promise, over deliver. All right, public companies, they do it every single time if they can. You should do it if you can in life in general. And they come in at 11 billion was their forecast last quarter. They come in at 13.5. And then the market was looking for about 12.5. This quarter they're in right now, August, September, and October. They say, no, we're not going to do 12.5. We're going to do $16 billion in that quarter. Uh, even with all the optimism built into it, boy, you talk about an acceleration to what they're talking about here. Um, yeah, so you jump over to NVIDIA shares, man. You're trading at 506. You're up above $35. That's going to be an all-time high print for NVIDIA on the open. We jump around some of the other stocks getting impacted by that. You jump over to Amazon, catching a slight lift. They were up by a couple bucks. No huge reaction. You jump over to Microsoft. They got a lift this morning, man. Back to a 10-minute chart. There's your pop on NVIDIA. You go from 328 to 333. Again, Microsoft, you're talking about all-time highs of 366 just recently. Yeah, seven, eight days ago before we got a little bit of a pullback. But this may be the ignition of another little rally right here because, boy, AI, it is not going away anytime soon. Just mammoth numbers, 72 percent margins. Uh, I guess it would make sense when you're selling chips that cost $30,000. And some of those chips, I was looking at them this morning, can't help but be curious of, of how you're making that type of money. And maybe some of you, and this is where this our man Dave White, he would be having some spectacular shows with NVIDIA right now. Uh, the H100 is one of their biggest chips out there. $30,000 is what they're selling that bad boy for. Uh, going for more than that, 
basically if you're getting an aftermarket chip and they're going to sell about a half million of those maybe this year and those chips cost them just over three thousand dollars to make yeah pretty remarkable they're selling them for 30 they're making them for three they're going to sell five hundred and fifty thousand. look at these are just cherry-picked articles folks okay um nvidia this is prior to the earnings event okay h100 gpus 550,000 of them is what they're going to be pushing out um yeah, about $3,300 $3, is what it costs them to make it, and they sell it for $30,000. That's a 1,000% markup on those chips. They sell more than that. They get the data center in there as well. Uh, but, boy, you can't, beat, you can't beat on any more of a dramatic fashion than they just did, folks. And you back it up to where we were 90 days ago. You back it up before then. We've had a few gaps, right? You could say the writing was on the wall back in February when you actually got a gap on their numbers. When you were at 200, you come into the earnings. You come into the next earnings at 300. You come into these earnings at 470. Call it 500. The multiples are getting pretty lofty. But, boy, when you get forecasts where you're raising the revenue from 12.6 to 16, folks, that's like a 30% beat on revenue that you just guided to the top side. And keep in mind, this is not like a business like Walmart, okay? And we know that. But the reason why it's such a dramatic shift when you get that type of re a revenue rise, the margins are bonkers. So they're making 72% margins, and they just went from taking in maybe $12 billion over the next 90 days to taking in $16 billion, and their margins are through the roof. What does that mean? Lots of profits to go around. $25 billion share buyback as well in those NVIDIA numbers. So watch out on the open, man, because, yeah, we are higher. But boy, I don't even think the market that they were going to come in um, could have factored in that they were coming in at 16 billion. <sighs> Pretty remarkable. Yeah, look at this. So I'm jumping. I had a Wall Street Journal article up here, right? We were just looking at the data center broken down by fiscal year, right? That's where Bloomberg has it. And let's take a look because the data center is like bonkers, man, in terms of their data center revenue per quarter. They're looking for a huge acceleration in the second quarter of 2024. Look at these numbers, man. Absolutely remarkable in terms of where they are. So this is the journal article saying it's just getting started, okay? And that may be the case, but keep in mind, folks, that it's just getting started, but the market knows that, which is why they're trading at multiples that are even going to be more lofty today than they were yesterday, right? We'll talk to our man Kevin Hinks after the break. What was he saying yesterday? I think the P.E. was like 235, something like that. Well, it's going to be more than that today. They're making more earnings, so it's going to shift that P.E. a bit. Uh, but boy, lofty prices to say the least. And yeah, check out the data center revenue per a quarter. It used to be nothing, man. It used to be four billion in the first quarter of 2018. That's 410 million, which is still a number. Well, guess what? It's going to be 10 billion dollars in the middle of 2024. That's 90 days, man. Absolutely remarkable. Yeah, just going down the numbers. Uh, data center revenue, $10.3 billion, a huge jump for the business that was running at less than $4 billion a quarter just six months ago. I mean, these numbers, video game style numbers, man. So be careful if you are ever thinking about shorting this equity, man. We'll see where we go. The open's going to be an interesting one, to say the least, folks. We're going to have all these stocks rocking. You jump over, as I mentioned, to Microsoft shares. They're up by about six, seven dollars. You jump over to Google. They are higher as well. We're coming back for the open. Nasdaq 100 up by a full percent. Stay tuned, folks. Excuse me. We got one more segment coming back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up about 19 right now. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 1.07%. We got NVIDIA shares skyrocketing higher. To talk about some of the action, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the Schwab Network. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team, do an outstanding job of breaking down the day's market action. And let's just get right into it. Boy, Kevin Hinks, a lot to like in those NVIDIA earnings, man. Where do we begin? Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, hyperbole is becoming kind of commonplace now when, when, when we talk to NVIDIA. Um, you know, when you guide from $7 billion revenue to $11 billion, and the markets get very excited, and you actually come in at $13.5 billion, and then you guide to $16 billion for the next quarter, uh, the markets should get excited. And, you know, the question that is, can the growth keep up with the valuation and as at least for right now tommy short term the answer is yes i mean some of the numbers jensen warren's comment talking uh yesterday about we are not shipping close to demand that means you know there's big firms out there spending money on capex for ai microsoft google amazon you know, all signaling that they're going to spend more on AI, I mean, Microsoft's CapEx this year is $8.9 billion. And so think of the money that they're, they're going to spend. This is a company growing like. Level. AMD's coming out with chips. We all, we've already read that uh, some of these other companies are coming out with, like, Google Alphabet. Microsoft, Amazon, all working on in-house chips. Why? When something gets this popular, you know these little shops and little rooms in these large companies with big money are throwing money at AI and trying to develop these chips. So I expect competition to come in, but when, Tommy? And from what level in NVIDIA? That's the, 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 the question that's torturing traders today. Torturing, man. Boy, and yeah, you talk about some numbers. You surmised it well, man. And some of the margins they're dealing with are just video game style numbers, man. What was it? 72%, I think. They're dealing with margins. So pretty remarkable you bring a revenue beat like that when you're talking about margins like that. So much money going to the bottom line. $25 billion share buyback. Uh, boy, and we're going to get to see those stocks rock today with NVIDIA right now. I got it up on the Thinkorswim platform at about 503. Spiked to a round number of 520 last night. 
with that in mind, Kevin, we move forward. We're going to get a lift this morning, man. Uh, and we jump to Jackson Hole tomorrow. What are you looking for some market action? We've been talking about it, but we're about 24 hours out right now from the chairman's speech. Uh, where are you trying to position yourself? How are you thinking about that as we come into yet another lift in the markets as we come into Jackson Hole? Yeah, today will be a tricky day, Tommy, because uh, Boeing's going to weigh down the Dow. That's why it's struggling. You know, even though this is a great day for the NASDAQ, pretty solid day for the S&P, you all know when things seem so obvious, you got to be very wary. So uh, I look at this overall market starting the day where it is. It, it, as much as we'd like to say differently, it's mixed, right? I mean, you've got the Russell and the Dow down. You've got the E-mini only up seven t seven sixteenths of a percent. So, uh, I mean, you'd think the Nasdaq w w would be higher, but remember, these stocks have run into this number. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, right now as we sit, NVIDIA hasn't even covered their market maker move yet. It was $45, $46. It's only about $31 higher. So, you know, it, it, don't think that it, this is just a knee-jerk, absolutely 100% chance that the market's going up today. But, you know, because you, cause you've got yields working against her, you've got the stronger U.S. dollar working against her, there's macro pressures out there that could take some of the happiness out of the NVIDIA earnings, Tommy. Yeah, we get to find out. We got the opening bell in about seven and a half minutes from right now. Uh, always an interesting time, it seems, lately in the markets. As we come into late August trading, Kevin, uh, we got Labor Day coming up in a week and a half, basically. With that in mind, we got lots to talk about. You guys got any equities planned for the program coming up at 12 o'clock today, Kevin? Look, Billy was going to do a presentation on Ulta. That has earnings after the bell. We'll trade Marvell, which has earnings after the bell, and then we'll trade Workday. Three names coming out with earnings today. We have actually a good group of stocks coming out with earnings today. So, yeah, we'll trade um, Marvell, Ulta, Beauty, and Workday today, Tommy. Three interesting stocks, man. That Alta one, boy, that, that quite the quite the chart to put it lightly. Up to five fifty six, I have it up here on the Thinkorswim platform. We've backed off a bit, kind of right to uh, last year's high, uh, approaching four thirty seven. Well, Kevin, I appreciate the time on a busy morning as always, man. We'll be watching Fast Market at twelve today on the Schwab Network, and uh, look forward to talking to you next week, man. You have a great one, and we'll talk to you on Tuesday. Okay. Talk soon. Sounds great. Folks, tune in 12 o'clock today. You heard it. They're talking Ulta. They're talking Marvel. They're talking Workday. Uh, I'm sure they might talk a little bit of what's going on in this market with NVIDIA digesting those numbers as well. And yeah, Kevin said it well, man. Boy, you talk about beats across the board, but a lot of optimism as we come into this market. And boy, you only have the S&P up 17 points, right? Meanwhile, the Magnificent 7 getting quite a lift this morning with NVIDIA shares up by 30. As Kevin put it, not even in the expected move, though. All right. You jump over to the Analyze tab, you jump into the simulated trades, folks. You take a look at the action. If you were buying, these prices are as of the close of action last night, okay? You had NVIDIA trading about 470. I've got to expand this a bit to get all the contracts that are at the money. There's your 470s, okay? If you're buying a call, a 470 call, you're paying about $23 for that call. And what do you got right now? Well, you're about 33 bucks. So, yeah, you have a small beat to the upside. But you see the point, man. Quite the move, priced in, and you've barely beat the expected move, even if you were directionally correct, right? The volatility that's priced in is either direction. If you're buying a call, um, yes, you're profitable. And this is why, folks, check out Fast Market on the Schwab Network. We air it right here on Tiger TV every day at 12 noon Eastern time. I've learned so much myself over the years from Kevin Hanks, the team over at the Schwab Network, what they've put together, the way they walk you through hypothetical trade setups, because what Kevin often says, right, is that you need a market bias. And then what they teach you to do is to take that market bias and to construct the best trade you can using your market biases, okay, to build a trade with the best risk reward profile over what you expect is going to happen. So in this instance, and I'm doing hypotheticals here completely, okay, this is my hypothetical, but you could have said, if you were looking for this type of action from NVIDIA, right, one of the things you want to be thinking about is, okay, I'm looking for a beat here, but guess what? Man, we got a lot of optimism priced into this equity, right? We're dealing with multiples that are getting video game style numbers. Maybe instead of being the person that's going to be the one buying a call, 
maybe instead of being the one that's going to pay the premium to the upside, I know that even as a bull here, even as a bull that thinks NVIDIA is going to crush it in their numbers after the market on Wednesday, I say to myself, you know what, though, man, paying $23 for a 470 at the money call, basically, right? You closed at 471. A dollar in this equity is nothing coming into earnings. So you're paying about 23 to 22 dollars of premium for that 470. You know what you could have done, folks? You can be the seller of premium. Maybe it made more sense in that estimate to uh, sell a put spread, sell a, a credit put spread where you're the one absorbing the 23 dollars of premium for a 470 put. Okay, now maybe you want to cap that by buying a put a little bit below the market. You give yourself a, a credit spread, but you see the difference here, man. As we are at four five oh four, yes, you've beat the expected move, but boy, we got a lot of volatility priced into this equity. We're gonna see where we come back for the open, folks. You got the Nasdaq up by about one percent on the dot. S and P's up by eighteen. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for that opening bell. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. as we open up you get the nasdaq 100 we give it up on the open man it would be remarkable right like kevin was saying that's where experience folks comes into things um you know you come into it at some pretty lofty levels right now but boy i don't know if ironic would be the word 
but nonetheless, we actually uh, dip a little bit of lower. As you have the NASDAQ 100 up only three quarters percent right now. And think about it. We got these stocks crushing it, right? Dow actually positive. Kevin mentioned it. You got Boeing trading lower today. They catch a bit on the open. Boeing off about 2.1 percent right now. That having to do with the new 737 MAX. Well, the people putting it together, they're just drilling holes where they shouldn't be drilling them, man. Uh, improperly drilled holes discovered in a key plane component. Can you imagine what goes into building these planes, man? Uh, no material impact on the delivery range is what they're talking about here. Nonetheless, another complication. Yeah, during factory inspections, we have identified fashionable holes that did not conform to our specs in the pressure bulkhead. Seems like that would be an important area, the pressure bulkhead, drilling holes into the pressure bulkhead. Um, yeah, so you're getting a pullback there. The 737 MAX having a few problems, but nonetheless, Boeing catches a lift only off about 2% right now. Let's see how NVIDIA trades on the open. What are we saying? Are we saying higher or lower? Well, we get the NASDAQ pullback. Look at this thing, man. I mean, can you imagine? This is where you, you're, you're in a losing position if you bought an at-the-money call last night, folks. This is why you got to understand options. It's why you got to check out Fast Market if you've never checked it out, folks. Got to be frustrating if you're buying a call towards the close of action yesterday and you're actually breaking even to losing money this morning. We got a pullback. NVIDIA still up by 5%, still up $23 from where we were at the close of yesterday. But boy, you can't beat more dramatically than that. We got some sellers this morning on that strong news. Microsoft shares, what? We were up by six, seven bucks. We're now only up by, we're not even up a percent for Microsoft. You jump over to Amazon shares, they're up by four tenths percent. Apple shares right now actually in the negative by three tenths percent. We jump over to Tesla in the red. They sell off as well. We jump over to Google shares, holding on to gains, but a little bit of a sell off. We gonna roll over red today? Come on, that would be remarkable. Nonetheless, Boeing shares, uh, yeah, off about three percent right now. All right, we jump to jobless claims. Uh, a distant data point this morning with everything else going on, but jobless claims dropped to 230,000, the lowest in three weeks. Applications for unemployment fell for a second week. week. Hawaii saw the biggest jump since the start of the pandemic after the fires they were dealing with there. So initial claims decreased by 10,000 to 230. On an unadjusted basis, claimed, claims declined last week to around 198. That's the lowest since October. However, the drop was offset somewhat by the biggest jump in applications in Hawaii since the onset of the pandemic after those wildfires. So you check out where we are in Hawaii, right? That's only 5,000, but you see the type of difference you have there in terms of that 5,000 coming in. We're dealing with 230 overall, so pretty negli negligible number, but obviously they're dealing with some really tough situations, to put it lightly, in Hawaii, and a lot of people dealing with jobless claims as that state goes through quite a disaster. Uh, nonetheless, we get jobless claims, continuing claims, which include those who have received benefits for longer than a week, actually edging down to 1.7 million in the period. Uh, yeah, so we'll see where we go from there. Boy, we got to talk a little bit about Russia for a moment. He shored up that power, all right. That's what happens when you shoot your enemy out of the sky for the world to see. Putin shores up power base after Pergozin plane crash in Russia. Is it is it a crash or is it... Is that what you call it? I guess you call it a crash when even it's shot down potentially by a missile. Uh, when I first saw the headlines, I said, really, was that guy so foolish just to be flying out of Moscow on a 10-person plane with his name on the manifest? Yes, that seems to be exactly what happened, man. No matter how smart you think people are, man, sometimes they just do the stupidest things, all right? Whether it's greed, whether it's uh, ego, whatever it is, he flew out of Moscow on a 10-person plane and his name was on the manifest, folks, and they just shot it out of the sky. Uh it just shows you who's in charge over there, and Putin's got no shame, man, at all. He does not care. Probably wanted it to be that way, and that's the end of that, as they say. Many in elite say Wagner leader's demise is a stabilizing factor. Well, it's stabilizing, all right, stabilizing for Putin. Not sure if people in Russia are happy about that. Some may be, some may be not, but boy. Uh, quite a spectacular end, only about 60 days after it all began. It was June 23rd. There it is, and on August 23rd, he's getting shot out of the sky. That was his video as they started that uprising, and yeah, just pretty wild, man. And it does, you know, it's it reminded me a bit. I was thinking about this last night as these markets roll over. Are we gonna get negative prices in the Nasdaq 100? My goodness, that would be bonkers. What's Nvidia doing? They're holding on to the gains, but I think everything else is selling off a bit. Microsoft 
only up about eight tenths percent right now. Amazon barely in the positive right now. Google shares barely in the positive. Boy, this is quite a pullback. Let's check out what we got going on else. VIX basically unchanged right now at 1587. We keep our eye on the dollar index right now. Dollar spiking higher to 10387. We check out yields. Yields sitting back at about 10920. Longer term picture. Pretty close to those lows, right? Yeah, we don't have a 108 handle anymore, and we had a 108 handle earlier in the week at 10828. Take a little bit of a longer term picture, man, and you're talking about 108. 0918 when even this year we were pushing 117 almost uh let alone where we've been in recent years so yeah pushing lower levels right now we got higher yields you got a stronger dollar and we got the nasdaq barely hanging on to gains man you're only positive by 40 points the sell-off continues we just dropped over 100 points from the open man so we're at 15,246 we'll see where we go from there all right what else we got pulled up here Yeah, we talked about NVIDIA. We talked about Boeing. Yeah, I got a few others. We we go to Chairman Powell, man. We're 24 hours out. You take a look. at. We talked about yields. We talked about the dollar, man. Very interesting action as we get a little bit of a sell-off. I mean, if you had the winning trade, I guess why would you hold through Chairman Powell's Jackson Hole when optimism is, is at basically all-time highs for AI? The multiples we're dealing with are almost video game style numbers, and we're talking about moves, folks, in a matter of days. I mean, last Friday we were at 416, we're at 520 last night, let alone sitting at 493, right? Can't blame anybody taking some money off the table. Why would you be withstanding the Jackson Hole speech tomorrow when it seems like everything is priced for perfection, as in the tech stocks coming in, the market pricing things with a... Fed that has been accommodating, to put it lightly, right? I think there's a lot of risk right now. We're seeing rates kind of reprice themselves, but there is a lot of risk when you think about what Chairman Powell could say that could spook the markets a bit, or what Chairman Powell could say that could accelerate them. And how do you accelerate them when they're already getting accelerated, right? They've already been accelerated. So that's kind of the worry. The worry here is they're accelerating so much that they are not going to allow the economy to cool enough to tame inflation, which is what is necessary. Well, we get to find out, man. We are 24 hours and 30, 27 minutes, about 24 hours. He speaks at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, 10.05, maybe the exact number that he's talking at. And as I mentioned, we go over to yields right now. We got the 10-year. We're sitting at a yield on the 10-year right now, 4.22%, 4.22%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. We're going to talk a little gold report. My dad, he's got a webinar coming up in six days. We'll be right back. We'll talk some gold. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by six points right now. Did you have negative prices on your bingo card when we had those NVIDIA earnings last night? You see the pop at 420, man. We've gotten it basically all back. We're now almost 30 points off of the highs. And those highs were from 11 o'clock last night almost until 7 o'clock this morning. We were trading at 44.76 as of 7 a.m. I mean, that's where a lot of people are in front of their terminal by 7 o'clock in the morning, especially if you're a trader in the market. And meanwhile, we got the S&Ps now off 20 plus points from that price point. You got the NASDAQ 100 up 18. Gotta love this market, man. Never think you know more than this market, folks. NVIDIA shares up only $18. There's your losing position if you bought a call at the money last night, right? You jump over. And what are they trading at right now? We pull them up. Let's see. You're still going to have some volatility in them. Oh, no, look at you. You're getting a dramatic action. This is where options are great, folks. So we looked at it, right? There is so much volatility priced into today and tomorrow that you still got a $20 price tag for the 470s. And what were these last night? 23? Yeah, so you've lost money. Yeah, so you've lost money. Yeah, they were $23 last night, and you can get out of them right now for 21 Meanwhile, the stocks jumped about 17 bucks. Should make sense because you, you needed a bigger move than that. Just interesting across the board. Let's check out some of those other stocks as we got the NASDAQ rolling over. You got Microsoft shares, gifts it up, the whole thing. Uh, Microsoft up eight tenths percent. Amazon shares in the red this morning, 135. Google shares up about two tenths percent. Apple, the big dog, down six tenths percent. Some of the other chip stocks, whew, AMD gives it all up. They're down 1.5%. Don't be a competitor, folks. Intel down about four tenths percent. Absolutely remarkable. All right. I mentioned it, folks. My dad, he's got his first gold report subscriber webinar coming up in almost four years, man. Time is amazing. I was talking to him last night. Uh, last one he did was 2019, man. So get in there and subscribe to the gold report, folks. Uh, he has had, listen, it's 1,100 weeks he's been writing this. I'm going to be in there. He's having some great trades, and he thinks the gold market's ready, and that's why he's excited to do it. What Moves the Gold Market is the name of the webinar. It will be next Wednesday, 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. You can go to the Gold Report subscriber webinar Wednesday. You come back Thursday. Get ready for Labor Day weekend. Uh, yeah, pretty remarkable we're there, man. What he's going to be talking about, a deep dive into the markets, going over gold, bonds, and the dollar. Where are they now? What to look for as gold and the bonds move higher and the dollar moves lower. He's going to break down the XAU, the HUI, and the GDX. How are they trading and what to look for as we move higher. He'll talk about some of the gold equities that he has in the gold report. He'll be able to answer your questions live. Uh, he just had a new equity that he purchased on Monday, that equity in the gold report. The silver company, still below where they got into it, folks. He's got three active positions beyond that. And yes, check out the Gold Report. My dad will be talking about it this afternoon, I'm sure. If you've never checked it out, folks, now's the time to do it. You can sign up by clicking on the front page of TFNN. You can either sign up for the month, the six-month, or the yearly.
the six month, you can get in there for a 22% savings, save $133. You save almost $400 for the year. It's a buck 19 for the month. And remember, all of these come with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're thinking about signing up and staying on, I encourage you to sign up for the six month, sign up for the year. You still get a 30 day money back guarantee. If you're unhappy within 30 days, you call up, you cancel, you request your money back guarantee, you reprocess it. And it makes sense to sign up for those longer ones if you're planning on staying. And yeah, either way, you get a month of the gold report, you gain access to the report right, right when you sign up, and then you'll gain access to that archive with my dad, Tom O'Brien, uh, a week from yesterday. So six days from right now, man. Uh, he wants to get it in there. He wants to be talking about that gold report right now. And if you, uh, excuse me, if you, I've been listening to his program, okay, then you know that he's thinking the time may be now, man. It ties into bonds. It ties into the dollar. We've had some magnificent moves in both of them recently. And so Tom's going to be in there. My dad, next Wednesday, folks, he'll be talking about that on his show coming up at 3 o'clock today. We just announced that this morning. Uh, so get in there. Sub subscribe to the Gold Report right now. Don't wait because he's got the report out there. You can get into it. If you're planning on going, why not sign up right now? You can access the Gold Report right now, see what he's into, see what he was buying on Monday. Uh, and it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And as I mentioned, the last webinar, I think it was September of 2019. This one is August of 2023. He almost made it four years. We got him in there. Um, so they don't come often, folks. Don't miss it. It's coming up in six days. Check it out. Uh, I'm a little biased. He's my dad, but I'll be watching as well. And boy, you talk about a market, man. Just can't overstate how amazing this is. Let's check out the VIX this morning as we got a little bit of a sell-off. No real sell-off on the S&Ps. Now, remember, uh, on the VIX, excuse me, remember, the VIX is predicated on the S&P, okay? So not predicated on the NASDAQ, where we just lost a full percent. NASDAQ just gave up a full percent in the last 17 minutes of trading, man. Cannot overstate how dramatic the moves are in this market. We jump over to crude. We just touched a recent low. Crude, 77.78. We were down to 77.59. You talk about volatility everywhere, man. Crude just dropped a buck fifty from where we were trading at a couple hours ago. We jumped to that gold contract, 1942. We keep our eye on the dollar index, pulling back a bit, 103.75. We were as high as almost 104, pushing those recent highs. A little bit of a bigger picture on the dollar index, as we've been talking about. Uh, now above where we were at the beginning of July, we're trading at 103.75. Seems like it's bumping up against that 104 area. Now keep in mind. That 104 area, we might have a little bit of resistance coming into the highs at the end of May in the early part of June. Above that, you're looking at 106 almost from where we were in March. But the dollar, 103.75 right now, and we jump to those 10 years right now, the 10-year. As I mentioned, we keep checking it, but boy, it's important. We're coming into Jackson Hole in about 24 hours from right now. We get the 10-year sitting at 109.23. All right, what else we got pulled up here? We talked about Boeing, jobless claims, NVIDIA. Yeah, one last one, tidbit on NVIDIA, man. Wall Street's last analyst with the sell on NVIDIA gives in. It's about time, man. 54 buy ratings from analysts. Boy, that has to be a tough one when you're the last one on the block somehow holding out saying NVIDIA's not a buy and that thing just will not stop. Uh, Morningstar upgraded the chip maker to a hold after blowout results on Wednesday. And listen, you know, they're, they might be providing some sanity into a little bit of an insane market right now, um, but they're getting left in the dust as an analyst. And yeah, you're higher, and let's see if NVIDIA is hanging on to those gains. I think they're one of the select few actually right now. Everything else selling off a bit. No, oh, they're giving it up, man, every time. This is remarkable. Look at this drop, man. Listen, you know what the best thing you can do is you, they always say learn from your mistakes, folks, okay? Everybody makes mistakes in every part of life. The older you get, the more you realize that everyone make, makes mistakes. Don't dwell on them. Just learn from them, okay? You know what's even better than learning from your mistakes? Learning from somebody else's mistakes, okay? Try and do that as well. If you weren't a seller in this market on the open, it's okay. As in, if you were a buyer yesterday and you didn't say, hey, I'm taking your profits on the open, that's okay. We all make those decisions. They are risk-reward decisions. You made a risk-reward decision. You thought it was going higher. It didn't. Well, what happened? You, it traded lower. So you were willing to risk those profits. You lost those profits, okay? While well, we move on. Just remember, though, folks, how quickly the market can give it and it can take it back. Okay, just that quick, absolutely remarkable. I don't think many people had NVIDIA shares printing a 481 print 
prior to 10 a.m. this morning. I don't think many have the NASDAQ 100 minus by seven. Where are we going to be by the time I'm off the air? Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. Don't go away. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the NASDAQ 100 briefly in the red, and maybe that, that was the plunge as we get a little bit of a lift from negative prices. You get the NASDAQ 100 barely in the green right now. Pretty remarkable. NASDAQ only up by one tenth percent. SPs up by three tenths percent. Dow up by three tenths percent. Complete reversal of everything we had going on at the open, man. It seems like there's been a little bit of a rotation. Our man Basil Chapman loves to talk about those rotations, man. And we just got a rotation out of growth stocks and into the Dow, whatever it be. Let's jump over to Boeing because they were putting a real hurt on the Dow. Uh, still off by 3.2%. So we got action across the board in terms of the Dow trading higher. NASDAQ gives it up. We're back to 15,220 right now. You get the Russell in negative prices. We jump over to NVIDIA. As we are at 484, we're up by $13 or 2.8%. You're really just back to where you were at the beginning of Tuesday. This is where our experience pays off, man, realizing that, hey, there's a lot of optimism in this. What happens if we roll over negative? Could you imagine if NVIDIA goes negative today? Talk about a lesson, man. It is possible, folks. We're only 10 bucks higher. 10 bucks in this stock is a heartbeat. Remember that we were just at 416 on Friday. Remember that we came into the last earnings at 
300, I think, is where we were. We came into the earnings before that at 200. And you're talking about a company right now, $1.2 trillion. $1.2 trillion. That's quite a price tag, man. Uh, you talk about a rise. Let's keep our eye on some of those other FANG stocks. Amazon shares. Yeah, everything's a give up. We've settled a bit. Microsoft's still in the positive barely by about half a percent. You jump over to the big dog, Apple, off about half a percent. Tesla off 1.3% in those other chip makers, man. Look at a, look at AMD, right? 106.50, you're off by 3%. You were higher in the pre-market. Intel bounces again. They're barely positive. Quite the market, folks, to say the least. All right, folks, stay tuned. we got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. And don't forget, folks, you can check out the opening call as well. Basil did an outstanding webinar for his subscribers last night. 90 minutes. That's going to be archived today. If you're thinking about checking out the opening call, check that out as well. Uh, yeah, we get those bank stocks moving, right? A lot of action in the market. Can't wait to see you tomorrow as we get Jackson Hole. But stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's up next. Have a great Thursday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.